Chapter 287 The whole group seems to feel the tension, yet only Xavier is confused on what could be causing it. Despite that Oliver is the first to back down as he simply enters the archway without a word once he realizes that there is nothing he can do. What was all that about? Xavier asks. We're not letting Anna alone with Oliver. Lexi got out through clenched teeth. Oh right, Xavier said awkwardly. The whole next head of house goldmancer thing. I'm tempted to just go to another arch and be done with it. Ajax offers. There isn't anything on this floor that worries me but the next floor, and if any of you want to try the one after that I might need to intervene with the person under attack and I can't keep an eye on him all the time. No chance I am clearing the third floor. Xavier said with a shake of his head. As an hybrid fighter, it did also mean that Xavier was more spread out so he couldn't push a specific weakness of a monster's as much as a pure mage might in a good matchup. We can't just leave him. Anna said. He would be able to use that against you. With that everyone entered the arch one by one with Anna, going last. The second floor biome turned out to be a multitude of snowy and icy mountain peaks. The cold wasn't as extreme as the heat from the last floor, but the change in temperature got all of them to change their outfits in a hurry. Oliver is already standing there bundled up in a warmer set of clothes. Is this an elemental floor? Xavier asks with a tinge of hope. No, both Ajax and Alvier respond at the same time. It would be much colder if it was an elemental floor, this is just a cold biome. Ajax continues. Don't go near any cave entrances, most mountainous biomes have either a bear or humanoid inhabitants. Oliver cautioned as all of them started to move from the entrance arch once they finished getting dressed. We've got incoming. Ajax quickly turned and looked up to see a large eagle easily twice his size coming towards them from above. It feels like a mini-boss, I'll handle the rest of the pack if one of you wants to get their fight out of the way. With that Ajax started to fire arrows towards the other three birds accompanying the mini-boss. As much as Xavier wanted to get his fight out of the way he knew that a flying enemy wasn't a good matchup for him until his magic got a bit stronger so he let Anna take care of it. The eagle quickly focused on Ajax after he let loose two arrows that easily put down two of its pack, unfortunately that left it unprepared for the large fireball Anna threw at it. The eagle did manage to react and a strong beat of its wings, infused with mana conjured a small wind shield, but that wasn't enough to block the entire fireball. Ajax used the explosion as a smoke cover to take out the last of the smaller eagles and put away his bow as he watched Anna engage with the eagle. For her part Anna didn't let up on the attack and threw two fire lances one after the other. The first was the eagle managed to evade as it started its dive towards her but the second one connected and scorched its right wing leading it to crash into the ground and taking away its flight. The eagle wasn't ready to quit with just that as it fired a wind blade towards Anna that was powerful enough to have Ajax reaching for his mana. Anna was prepared however as she quickly put up an earthen wall. This is where the difference in levels shows however as despite using a good counter the wall still crumbled and a few of the rocks were blasted back towards Anna, fortunately she intercepted the attack far enough away that they didn't reach all the way to her. From there, it was just a matter of a few more spells, before the eagle burned away. As they all moved further into the floor, it was actually Ajax who took out the next mini-boss as his required kill to clear the floor. The reason for this was that it was a polar fox that snuck dangerously close to them before any of them detected it and Ajax responded with his full power as he crushed its head with his hammer. I'll take the bear. Lexi volunteered once they found their first cave on the mountain and she was eager to get her required kill. What followed was a perfect example of why a mage with good versatility is a menace to deal with even when you are up in levels. She utilized earth to trip up the bear and ice to slow its movement further, lightning to make approaching her even harder and finished by slowly bleeding it out with cuts from her wind attacks. Despite the relative safety of her attempt, she did run through a full three quarters of her mana taking the mini-boss down. From there, they were attacked three more times by eagles and foxes, but none of those attacks had a mini-boss with them so Ajax and Oliver were quick to take them out. Despite finding an arch to the next floor, 
and also the obelisk by a sheer stroke of luck they still needed one more mini-boss for Xavier before they were done. There is another fox here. Ajax said as he picked up on the sound. Feels like a mini-boss you want to take it? Yeah, let's get this over with. Xavier said as he pulled out his sword. Ajax was quick to throw a water balloon filled with bright green paint at the fox. This did nothing to harm the creature, however, it severely hampered its stealth capabilities, without taking anything away from Xavier should he defeat it in single combat. Even with that advantage the fight wasn't as straightforward as Lexi's. Xavier had a bigger level gap to overcome and a melee fight didn't allow him to put the mini-boss in quite the same bad spot that Lexi and Anna had put their respective opponents. His skill with the sword did shine through however as he managed to kill the boss with only a few mild scratches. Should we go back to the arch we saw? Lexi asked once the fox was dead. I think I see an arch there that's closer. Ajax denied, this time he did check the arch and what he felt was a lot of water mana, it definitely wouldn't have affected him enough, but there was almost no chance for Anna or Lexi to clear another floor if the bosses they had to kill were submerged. There was another bear guarding this arch, but Ajax was having none of it so while Oliver distracted it with an opening ranged attack Ajax was quick to get close and slam his axe into its skull killing it quickly. Ajax was ready for a confrontation about who would go through this arch first since with the monsters on the other side being close to level 40, there was a good argument for him being the first one through. Come on already, just go, I want to get out of here. Xavier made sure the argument didn't take place by simply pushing Oliver through the arch and following behind him. The mage was surprised and simply didn't have the physical stats to respond as he was pushed through the arch. The three of them left on this floor shared a quick laugh at Xavier's quick thinking and Oliver's surprised expression that they got to see for all of two seconds, before they followed them to the next floor. What the hell? Ajax muttered as he took a look around at the new floor while also dismissing the prompt letting him know he gained an extra plus one to all stats. The odd layout of the floor did explain why he hadn't recognized the primary mana that he felt in the arch. I think we just found a jeweler's wet dream. Lexi joked as she also stared out at the spacious cavern made of crystals. Well this is where I leave you. Xavier said while ignoring the deathly glare Oliver was sending him following his stunt of pushing him through the arch there is no way I am killing anything that is level 40 and made of rock or crystal. I'll see you all soon. Following that simple declaration, he quickly made his way towards the arch, they just entered the floor from and stepped through it to get back outside. The words however were very on point for Anna and Lexi as well, despite them not being in quite as bad a spot as Xavier who would have to get into melee range of his enemies crystal and rock monsters were known for their high defense and endurance, which could make this a futile effort for both mages. How about you, do you think you can kill a mini-boss? Ajax asked. Of course she can, there has to be one or two golems here with an obvious core that they can destroy from range, even if it does take them an attempt or two we can just let them try a few times. Oliver didn't even give Anna and Lexi a chance to respond as he desperately tried to put on a supportive face, he couldn't let them back down and exit the dungeon here and now. Chapter 288 Well, what do you think? Ajax asked before he lowered his tone a whisper only for Anna and Lexi. He doesn't have as much freedom on this floor, the monsters here will be level 40 so he will also have to be on guard against them. I want to keep going. Lexi was the first to answer, unlike Anna, she wasn't as disadvantaged by the crystal nature of the monsters on this floor. I'll give it a go as well. Anna finally decided after a few drawn-out seconds of silence. It was all Oliver could do to not let out a sigh of relief. Now what? she asked. Now we pick a direction and go. Ajax said as he looked out towards the three large tunnels their chamber split opened into. Stay close to me, I don't know if they can dig through the crystal yet. The large crystal cavern was a little disorienting to the team of four, first and foremost, because while the cavern didn't lack a source of light with the wall all shining, they were also letting out colored light that changed as they progressed. A large upside to the cavern, however, was the loud sound that echoed from the monster's movement. Something is coming this way. Ajax and everyone else could clearly hear the screeching sound of crystal dragging across crystal. 
A large crystalline worm, made out of connected rings, was what quickly approached them. It wasn't all that large, its thickness about the same as a regular person with a length of about 12 feet. Ajax however was very surprised that he couldn't feel the presence of a core inside of it. Despite not feeling a core, he was still clear that crystals like this were weak to blunt force damage, so he quickly pulled out his hammer as well as his shield and prepared to engage. With the monsters being level 40 they were finally getting to the point where Ajax had to use his mana in order to fight, this meant that he could be worn down. Using Mana Siphon, with the mana concentration on this floor meant that he could maintain a high stat advantage for cheap. The worm was composed of about 40 rings that moved together and Ajax's fight swing of his hammer shattered five of them straight away, while also sending the monster flying backwards. This also led to some good news for the team as they watched the monster prepare to charge again. It's not healing. Lexi pointed out. They are golems, not elementals. Anna also breathed out a sigh of relief as golems could be worn down by breaking down their bodies without them simply regenerating from the environment. Once Ajax knew he was dealing with a golem and not an elemental, he flat out charged the worm all but launching himself at it. The impact of the shield easily crashing through another eight rings, and the hammer swing that followed took out another seven. With half its body smashed to pieces the rest of the worm finally stilled and died. It was one of the advantages of the golems that they could keep going regardless of what they lost so long as enough of them was still left intact. That didn't look so hard. Lexi said as she examined the crystals the worm had broken down into. Too bad it wasn't a mini-boss, I expect them to be a bit harder. Ajax shared his view on it. With that the team kept on moving, for the first time since they entered the dungeon, however Oliver was sticking a lot closer to Ajax. Unlike the young baron, the level 40 mage was much more susceptible to being overrun especially when faced with their next group of foes. We've got incoming, and it's either a centipede or there is more than one of them. Ajax called out as his hearing locked on the constant tapping that seemed to approach them. What rushed towards them were a large group of four-legged spiders. They legs much thicker than a regular spider and placed in a square formation allow the two feet tall monsters to move around quickly. The bigger issue was the eight feet tall, fully eight-legged mini-boss that was following in their wake. I can take this mini-boss. Anna was quick to call out once she saw the big spider. Despite the boss's much bigger size, the eight legs it had were all rather thin. With such an obvious target Anna was quick to launch some exploding fireballs aiming for the joints in hopes of immobilizing the boss. As for Ajax, he was quick to react to Anna's claim on the boss. Armed with his hammer and his axe, he got to work thinning out the dozen or so smaller spiders, while making sure not to engage the boss at all. The tiny spiders, however weren't his main worry as he periodically glanced towards Oliver. Thankfully he wasn't the only one as clearly Lexi had the same idea of keeping an eye on the caster. The miniboss was quick to move, but evidently slow to adapt, once Anna took out its first leg she had a much easier time all but immobilizing the spider within the first six attacks by taking out all of the legs on one side of its body, and even those two attacks that failed to take out one leg had managed to connect on the body of the creature slowly chipping away at it. How are you doing, do you need a potion? Lexi offered, she knew that despite the clear effectiveness of the exploding fireballs they weren't cheap to cast by any means. I'm fine. Anna said as she heaved in breaths before using an ice lance spell to crush the head of the spider as well as a good part of the torso, with the spider being immobile she had no problem aiming and killing the creature. The next miniboss they encountered was a rainbow-colored version of the worm they had first found on the floor. Not only that but this worm was also twice the size of his predecessor, in the end however its size didn't mean much as Ajax took it apart in much the same manner as the first worm if only this one taking a whole five swings of the hammer before dying instead of two. Hey, this can be taken outside the dungeon. Ajax exclaimed in surprise as his senses washed over the corpse of the worm. What are you doing? Oliver sounded outraged as he watched Ajax shove the entire body of the worm into his spatial ring. The whole reason you are clearing out an entire floor is so that they can't figure out what you cleared, you do know they will check your ring on your way out. Exactly Ajax nodded. 
If all they find are some third-floor gems they will think the reason I stuck inside to clear the floor was because I was greedy, especially since there are so many colors here. I don't care if they think I only got to the third floor, in fact I prefer it. It didn't, T take long for them to find another spider mini-boss for Lexi, to kill, however Ajax was sure to stay within two feet of Anna as they all got close to clearing the floor. As for Lexi, she very much copied Anna's trick of taking out the legs, before killing the boss. There is a worm, boss up ahead guarding an arch, kill it, and let's go. Ajax nodded towards Oliver, as he made sure to always put himself between Anna and Oliver. Unlike what he expected Oliver simply nodded at his instructions, before he entered smaller cavern. Despite the man's attitude Ajax did have to admit that Oliver did have some talent for ice magic. It didn't take long for Oliver to shatter enough of the worm for it to be considered killed. I'll go through first. Ajax said much to Oliver's surprise, his smile however fell off his face as he saw Ajax leading Anna with an arm around his shoulder towards the arch, she apparently used too much mana. Ajax's excuse was a clear lie to all four of them, however, since Anna was going with it, there was nothing Oliver could say. Despite turning his back to Oliver Ajax didn't release his, mana siphon. In fact, he extended its range as far as he could. It was a good thing he did as he was able to siphon off a good bit of mana off the ice lance that was heading straight for Anna just in time for him to pull out his shield and shatter the ice as it closed in on them with a shield bash. So you're finally showing your true colors. Ajax said as he turned to face off against Oliver, as Lexi and Anna both raised their staffs against him. Come now Ajax, Oliver started. This can still end up going in your favor in a big way. All you have to do is help me out here. Chapter 289 Anna POV My heart rate jumped as I felt the mana gather behind me and then approach quickly. I had been told more than once that it was a possibility, the standoff at the first arch had also been a nudge in the right direction, but I never thought it would actually come to this. When Ajax suggested that I pretend to have hurt my leg so that he would carry me through the arch I thought he was going too far. So you're finally showing your true colors. Ajax seemed calm, his voice even despite having just shattered the projectile coming for me like it was nothing. Both Lexi and myself raised our staff instinctively, years of training shining through, despite my emotional turmoil and shock. But all of this was nothing more than posturing almost moved, as well all looked to one another, while Lexi slowly stepped closer to me. Come now Ajax, Oliver started. This can still end up going in your favor in a big way. All you have to do, is help me out here. Well at least Oliver was quite as far gone as I thought, the ambush was one thing, but it seems he isn't that narcissistic as to think he can actually fight Ajax. My father has a good chance to take over the family, once she is out of the way. Your family will be rich, we'll make sure of it. Oliver continues to tempt him. You can name your price. To my great surprise a sinister chuckle rose from Ajax, at that moment I could feel, emotionless, struggle with all its might to suppress the surprise, and slight fear that he could actually be tempted. Should I make a counter-offer, is he actually considering this? We were no more than fifty feet from the arch, once we passed through it all we had to do was pass through the one we came out of on the next floor, and we would be free. With Lexi next to me, now, we might have a chance to get out of here alive against Oliver, who exhausted some of his mana with the mini-boss, and was quite a bit away from us. But it would all come down to Ajax's choice, even if he wasn't right next to me and across the room it wouldn't matter since he would still be able to stop us. Ajax's chuckle cut off abruptly as the coldest tone I ever heard from him was spit out from behind clenched teeth. It's clear why the goldmancers had you only focus on magic combat, even without the other skills. How you can be this dumb with all those points in intellect and wisdom is shocking to me. His words instantly calm me down, without my emotions running so high, I internally berate myself for even thinking that Ajax would even consider the bribe. Are you that attached to her? Oliver's desperation rose with every word. Do you know what it would mean to choose your own reward from a family like the Goldmancers? Do you see me as a greedy short-sighted fool? Ajax asked back, his rage regressing, or just being suppressed, as the conversation continued. Do you even process the offer you just made me? 
even if I was a greedy psychopath who would be willing to kill two friends on the word of someone he met a month ago this deal would be just bad all the way through. Ajax continued with disgust. Even in the best case scenario I still lose out. He wasn't wrong there, this is why it is so surprising to me that Oliver would even try anything. Ajax taking any bribe here would make absolutely no sense, I knew Oliver looked down on common-born people, but this much. You could ask for more gold than the average ducal house has, and you think this is a bad offer? Oliver sounded shocked by the refusal. Let's assume that the offer would hold true, let's also assume your father takes over the house next and honors that promise, let's also assume that killing both Anna and Lexi, since just killing one wouldn't be a kept secret, wouldn't get traced back to me in any way. That still has me losing out. Ajax took out his hammer and made a step towards Oliver. You think saving her would get you more? Oliver asked. They'll just say it was expected of you and give you a pat on the back. Nothing changing in my current situation is better than taking your deal. Ajax shook his head as he continued to advance while Oliver was slowly backing away. Your father would at best take the head position in three decades. What I need is for my relationships to hold strong now, at this moment. Ajax was definitely right there, now was when he needed support the most. With his once-in-a-lifetime talent and potential he just needed help now to set solid foundations, what good was a promise to him thirty years in the future, not that the estimate was even close to correct since I knew Dad had at least another half a century in him. A big questionable disaster like this would cut off most of Ajax's allies from him just from him not having stopped it regardless of what other blame gets put on him. I tire of this conversation. Ajax started his charge, sudden change in speed almost more than I could keep track of, I should raise my perception at least a little. I start channeling my own mana to help only for Lexi to put her hand on my wrist. No need to bother the fight won't be long and chances are we might get in the way just as much as we help. Lexi's comforting smile did a lot to help with the feelings of betrayal I was pushing down as I thought through how my own family ordered me killed. I chose to focus on the fight just to take my mind off it. Oliver started retaliating, despite being overmatched without a doubt, he was still a very talented fighter. His casting speed was faster than anything I have ever seen from anyone so low level. I knew chanting was his best skill, but to think he broke through the level 75 barrier already and even unlocked the ability to shorten the phrase. Walls of ice sprung up between him and Ajax as ice lances started to take form. The most shocking thing of all however was what I was feeling from Ajax. I knew he had a way to empower his body with magic, I also knew from our first meeting during the skirmish he had a way to wipe away mana residue. But my, sense mana, was telling me he was actively weakening Oliver's spells and using the mana he took from them to empower himself. I had never heard of any skill that could do anything close to that. It had to be a legendary skill since he was always using it without any drawbacks and it granted him so much power. It also finally made sense why he always seemed to get better the deeper in the dungeon we got, with more ambient mana to take the less he would use his own mana. Ajax stored away his shield and axe and took out his bow as the sightline was broken by one of the ice walls, he drew back an arrow and infused it with wind mana as he stepped back into view and released. The arrow would have pierced Oliver through the throat if it wasn't for his defensive amulet that knocked the arrow aside and into his shoulder. The outcome that was all but guaranteed from the start was now upon us. Despite his skill and power with magic Oliver didn't seem to have had any training in managing pain as he simply crumpled to the floor wailing as he held his shoulder in pain. I should look into getting a skill like, pain resistance, or even better, ignore pain. Don't kill him. Lexi's interruption surprised me. Tie him up so we can bring him back out. Why not just kill him here and be done with it? Ajax asked. He showed pure confusion, however, as if the difference between killing Oliver and restraining him was just the annoyance the second would be for the extra effort. If we take him out, he can be interrogated. Lexi said. Stopping the assassination is one thing, but if you help them root out the conspiracy publicly, you'll give old man Goldmancer the excuse he needs to give you a reward. 
Lexi was right, Dad did mention that he asked Ajax to look out for me, but this way no other branch could complain about him giving him a reward without also looking complicit. It's not like I'm doing this, for the reward. Ajax said as he shrugged, but also turned away, was that a bit of embarrassment I saw. Stupid idiot actually thought I could be tempted to kill some of my only friends. We probably weren't supposed to hear that second part but we had walked closer, I could also see Ajax deliberately squeezing the shoulder that still had an arrow stuck inside as he tied and gagged Oliver. Too bad Oliver would still get the point for this floor as we all passed through the arch, but it would be too much of a hustle to drag him to the entrance of this floor and then come back just so he won't get the reward. Ajax dragged the tied-up Oliver through the arch and Lexi, and I followed. Thanks for the help, and good luck. Lexi gave Ajax a hug that only slightly lingered, I wonder when she will finally admit that she has a crush on him? Good luck, I also wished him with a smile as I grabbed Oliver, and the three of us exited through the arch. Chapter 290 Ajax wished that we could keep Oliver's betrayal under wraps, but unfortunately, that would be too much of a security risk. Without the option to descend back down to lower floors, they would have to exit the dungeon or follow Ajax and exit together to make sure they all came out at the same time. Since following him past this floor was clear suicide for the both sub-level 30 casters, they all just chose to exit now and deal with the consequences of a more public betrayal. Ajax quickly shook his head and turned away from the exit, the public perception and politics would have their turn, but for now he was to be focused on getting this dungeon over with. The biome of the fourth floor wasn't all that great for him, a dark shadowy landscape filled with jagged edges. It was what he imagined hell would look like if someone extinguished all the fire and just let the place fall to darkness. None of this matters to Ajax however, as the strongest monster to be found on this floor would only be level 45, unless he did something monumentally stupid like activating the obelisk the risk to him on this floor was minimal. More than that he didn't even have to care about the theme of the next floor since he would be going one above that so all he needed to do was find the first arch, kill the miniboss defending it and push forwards. Much like Ajax expected it didn't take him all that long to find the first arch, the only problem was that he could feel just how much curse mana was in the ambient mana so for once he wouldn't have all that much time to use, mana siphon. Unwilling to suck in curse mana, he would have to rely purely on his own reserves to kill his enemies this time. The shadowy creatures turned out to be very similar to cephalopods, the only difference being that they were pitch black and they had a massive maw in the center of their head they could use to swallow a dog in one bite. Ajax's fist hit on them quickly got him to switch his weapons from the more defensive heavy-hitting shield and hammer to his axe and sword. The slimy shadowy fiends all but shrugged off his initial hammer blow, the heavy metal gliding off their skin. His attempts with a bladed edge turned out much better as he quickly cleaved through the small minions as the main boss stumbled to create some distance with three of the tentacles sliced off. Despite their speed and resistance to blunt attacks the small wind mana blades his swing released had gone through them like a hot knife through butter. This is why an adventurer always brings different weapons to a fight. Ajax muttered one of the rules Hatchet had drilled into his head all those years ago, specializing in one area means opening a weakness in another. Ajax passed through the arch without another thought after he sensed an odd combination of metal and lightning that he shouldn't have any problem fighting against. He was going to have to spend some time on the fifth floor as he hunted for a good arch from which to enter the sixth and final floor he planned to step on. As he took in his new surroundings Ajax could only stare slack-jawed as he carelessly dismissed the screen informing him of the extra stat points he received for clearing another floor. How was this possible, was it because of him? Is it the gods playing a prank on him? Standing in front of him was a droid, one that very much reminded him of the ones he had seen in the Star Wars prequels if they were made a bit more solid, complete with a blaster and everything. Intruder! Intruder! The droid turned on him and opened fire, real blaster fire actually coming out from the rifle. Thankfully Ajax could only thank whoever was playing this sick game with him that despite the somewhat clear resemblance to the droids fighting in a galaxy far far away, this droid not only had a level of 48 but his blaster fire lacked not only in accuracy but also in power, 
The two shots he had taken when caught by surprise had done barely more than heat up his armor and give him a small circular second-degree burn on the exposed skin it hit. Is this, because this is the first time I am truly alone on a floor? Ajax couldn't help but mumble as he brought his hammer and shield back out. The droid didn't even have a chance to recover for a response as Ajax vaulted over his cover to come rushing towards the droid shield first pinning it to the wall before a well-placed hammer swing left it without a head. Ajax wasn't done there though, as he wasn't taking any chances as he separated every limb from the torso of the droid before he could finally relax, and even that proved to be a moment too soon as, danger sense, held at him. Chances of success 0% initiating self-destruct, the bashed in head of the droid got out before every piece exploded, fortunately Ajax was quick enough to get away without being hurt any further. You're fine, you're fine Ajax kept whispering to himself as he started to explore the labyrinth of tunnels that, surprisingly enough, were nice enough to open the doors for him. His moment of peace and quiet was very much short-lived as the rolling ball of death he knew as a droidicar rolled out from the next door only to spring up from the ball shape, snap on its force field, and begin blasting at him. Despite the novelty of his new enemy Ajax was more than ready for a fight to break out this time. He wasted no time blocking the blaster fire with his shield as he approached the droid. Much to his surprise the droid had no issue with the insignificant damage it was doing to the shield and even refused to back away. His answer as to why that was was made clear when he felt his hammer swing loose close to a third of its momentum the instant it made contact with the force field. Even that wasn't enough, however, as the force field proved to be good enough that the droid simply bounced four times off the walls like a pinball before turning to return fire. Too overconfident Ajax was quick to mumble as he once again closed the distance from behind his shield with the droid, doing nothing more than scratching at the shield Ajax was using to protect himself. As Ajax swung the hammer a second time, unlike the first, however, this blow completely stopped the moment it made contact with the force field. Not only that, but the hammer's dark purplish radiance vanished at the moment of contact as well only for the droidicar to crumple to the floor in a pile of bent metal as the void blow finished it off in one swing. I've got nothing to hide if there is none to see it, he said smiling, as he examined the half-crushed round droid. Much to Ajax's pleasure the rifle from the first droid he had met on this floor was still very much in a working condition as Ajax picked it up and fired off a few practice shots. Despite the first one going relatively straight the second third fourth and fifth all went far astray as the blaster clearly had some severe recoil that also came in from odd angles on every consecutive shot. I take back everything I said about bad aim in the movies. Ajax silently begged as he still carried the blaster everywhere with him. If they were shooting with anything that even resembles this it's no wonder they can't hit anything. For doors and three basic droids, later Ajax was once again carefully exploring the layout of the dungeon floor. Easy does it, just don't run into a Jedi or a Sith. Ajax tried to encourage himself as he continued looking for the next arch. Ajax's bad luck seemed to continue as he made his way through the tunnels as he left behind a pile of scrap metal, surprisingly his, mana siphon, had no effect on the droids at all. It seemed despite their clear use of magic that presented in the way of magically enhanced short from the blaster. The same couldn't be said for his lightning, as more than one or two droids were sent into a sporadic seizure as he shot them with a lightning arrow. The droid's fragile nature being only displayed further when the jerks from the current passing through them leads to them breaking their own limbs off as they hit them against the floors and walls. It takes Ajax two more hours to finally find an arch he is happy with as he senses a balance of earth and life in the arch as well as a bit of water. Instead of entering the next floor, however Ajax decides to rest here for the night before heading into the new floor soon. Chapter 291 As he stands in front of the arch Ajax can't help but look back down the corridors that make up the labyrinth that is this floor. The high-tech panels on the walls, the constant were of machinery before his parents died in his first life experiencing something like this dungeon floor biome was something he had always wished for. He was also very much tempted to stay on the floor until he finally found one droid that could be taken outside so that he could keep that blaster. It wasn't even for the sake of power, Ajax didn't know how the dungeon or the system did it, but the blaster's fire here was more of an irritant than anything else. 
sure if you could handle the kickback and continue to aim the fast fire rate, almost instantaneous projectile speed and lack of ammo would make the weapon very powerful for a level 50, but it was clearly balanced so as to not be overpowering. The main reason why Ajax decided not to try getting that blaster was because he knew it would simply be taken away from him. There is no way the Empire would allow him to keep it once they saw it and the inspection his storage ring would go through, and he would much rather not get his hopes up only to see them dashed. At least the fun's not over yet Ajax murmured as he ran his hand down the best blaster he managed to find on his way to this arch shore, the blaster would burst into mana motes after he felt the dungeon but that didn't mean he couldn't keep it for one more floor as he climbed. Not only that, but he might even be able to push his skills further by seeing how his magic interacted when it was used to amplify a blaster. As he stepped past into the arch and onto the next floor Ajax felt the familiar pull on his body for an instant before appearing in front of another arch. What awaited him on the sixth floor of the dungeon was nothing as novel as the fifth floor. Despite that Ajax was of anything much more content with this floor theme as he took a look around. Surrounding him were miles and miles of glass greenhouses, as far as the eye could see. All neatly arranged in a grid layout with pathways, connecting all of them. He all but shouted in joy as his, sense mana, took in the world around him and he felt all the different mana herbs and plants that were being grown, the only thing that stopped him was the fear of attracting whatever monsters were on this floor. Good to know that I can start a fire here if I really need it. Ajax said to himself, though he could feel the pain that doing something like that, to all these alchemical ingredients, would cause him. With a careful step, the first thing Ajax did was go back to the arch and start focusing his, mana siphon, on it. He was going to do this absolute best, to remember the mana makeup of this type of floor. With all of his portable alchemy lab stored away neatly in his spatial ring Ajax stepped away from the arch, with a silent apology. I'm sorry, but I am going to worry all of you for a little while. Despite there being none to hear him Ajax knew it would take him at about three days to clear out the floor, but he planned on spending at least a week in here, if not more just to progress, his, alechemy, as much as he can with the variety of mana-infused herbs that are around the same level and the mana-rich atmosphere of the dungeon floor. His moment of silent apology was interrupted by a sharp ping from, danger sense, most troubling was that the danger was coming from below him. Ajax quickly jumped and launched himself into the air only to feel the power of his jump be the final straw, causing a small collapse of the ground he was just standing on. What he saw there under the ground sent a frosty chill down his back. Two hippo-sized moles with claws, the size of long swords, were shifting through the rubble and looking for him. The chill that went down his back had nothing to do with being attacked, that much he expected from the dungeon. The problem that came up was that the moles could and would destroy some if not most of the garden if they were left alone. Ajax simply wouldn't stand for that as he summoned his axe and swords before he charged down the moles looking to follow down their tunnels and quickly clean up the entire mole population of the floor before they destroyed too many of his precious ingredients. It was only twelve hours later that Ajax finally decided to take a break from his hunt. He carefully made sure to set up his base camp and barriers before he got ready for a good night's sleep. He didn't even get a proper chance to wash out his gear from the layers of mole blood and dust that he had built up in his tireless crusade before he fell on top of his bedroll and went to sleep. It took four hours before the next mole stumbled upon his little haven, but to Ajax it felt like barely seconds had passed between laying his head down and the alarm barrier waking him back up. The only thing confirming the passage of time to him was the refilled mana and stamina he had. He quickly took care of his uninvited guests before repacking everything and for the first time since he entered the floor he once again headed towards the surface. Despite only spending three hours underground Ajax knew that he had done serious damage to the mole population, from the looks of things this seemed to be a fairly standard if very rewarding floor biome, so he should have killed more than half the moles present on the floor already with his initial hunt. Might as well start on some alchemy now Ajax muttered to himself. I won't be able to keep any of the potions I make anyway, so I might as well make something that will help me clear the rest of this floor quicker. Once he finally found an exit to the underground tunnels Ajax had to face his next challenge on the floor, one however that he was more than happy to have. 
He was spoiled for choice in terms of what plants to use for his alchemy session. Being on such a high floor all of them approached the quality of some of the best ingredients Ajax had ever worked with before now. Add on the natural interference from the ambient mana and Ajax found his first three attempts to all end in failure. Professor Bilethorn told me that the more mare rich the ingredients were the harder it would be to prevent a failure, but I definitely didn't expect this. Ajax complained to himself as he emptied out his latest failed attempt. Despite having previously used ingredients of this mana concentration before, the biggest difference here was that he had always used them in combination with other inferior ingredients. Even in his previous delves, he would collect different plants from different floors before starting his alchemy. Now all of the ingredients being this high quality meant that there was no low quality ingredient that he would have to compensate for and saturate with the mana of the better ones as he did before. His fourth attempt finally saw a success as he carefully poured the completed potion into a vial, for his, alchemist's examination, to inspect. Much to his shock, the mana potion, common, was one of the best potions he had ever created. Despite the imperfect brewing this potion would still grant the drinker an instant infusion of 200 mana, as well as an increase in their mana regeneration of 20 times over the next minute. His moment of celebration was quickly interrupted as he heard voices coming from the glass greenhouse he had collected his ingredients from. He had no idea what language they were speaking, but from the sounds of it this floor definitely would have some humanoid monsters that he was going to have to take care of. This was the perfect chance to practice with his blaster. As Ajax carefully approached the sound of the conversation he leaned into his, stealth, skill as much as he could, with only a common skill, however, his progress was relatively slow, he would definitely need to look into getting a few higher rarity skills that would synergize with this one. Despite it taking him a bit of time he silently climbed one of the trees outside the greenhouse to where he had a clear view of the orcs that seemed to be having an argument while pointing to the empty plot inside the greenhouse from where he had collected his ingredients. To start with Ajax didn't use any mana augmentation on the blaster as he wanted to get a baseline for the weapon against these enemies, despite this he turned, mana siphon, all the way up to max and even used the tree he was sitting in to help with the recoil. Beside the initial shot, which accurately took one of the orcs right in its left eye Ajax felt like at most 10 of the next 30 shots even hit his target, however they did seem to do some burn damage. It was then that he tried his first, mana augmentation, on the the blaster as he infused it with void mana. Much to his surprise, the blaster bolts had turned from a bright red to a pitch black, unfortunately they also went from low damage to no damage at all. In hindsight that might have made sense seeing as Void helped bypass armor after the point of impact, but the bolts carried no force to speak of to damage the orcs. Changing the augment to magma however turned out to be a great success as the bolts now left small patches of magma on impact that the orcs had to quickly wipe off. His fun and experimentation quickly came to an end, however, as he felt, danger sense, let him know to store the blaster and pull out his shield just in time for the third orc a shaman by the looks of it, to throw a wind bomb at him. He managed to siphon enough mana from it that the wind blast released on contact with the shield did nothing more than violently remove him from the tree he was in. Back on ground, he saw the two orcs, marred with wounds from the blaster, charging towards him as he took out his hammer from the spatial ring. Experimenting and trying to increase skills was all well and good, but you always went back to the basics. Chapter 292 Changing back to wielding his usual melee weapons Ajax wasted no time in taking out all three orcs in moments. The only reason he was able to dispatch level 50s quite that easy was because of the irritating damage he had done with the blaster, but also because they weren't expecting him to dash into a melee frontal assault after a ranged sneak attack. Once he was done with the orcs Ajax chose to continue playing around with the blaster instead of starting a second round of alchemy. This latest combat had shown him just how much some of his skill could go. For all intents and purposes, the blaster was simply a weapon that focused small bursts of radiance magic. Ajax had known that such enchanted wands and staff did exit, but he had been told in no uncertain terms that they suck. This wasn't a wrong opinion to have either. Considering that enchantments use an external mana source unlike runes it means that with all the different variety of attacks creating one static way to attack wasn't all that useful. 
though the blaster had clearly proven that so long as you pushed enough, you could come up with something decent. What surprised Ajax however was the interaction between the blaster and his, mana augmentation, skill. It seemed that he could use the skill in order to create a stable mix of radiance and whatever mana type he added afterwards. The results were marginally useful for the amount of mana they cost, but their experience of mixing mana like that with his skills was invaluable. Aiming the blaster at one of the orc corpses nearby Ajax went ahead and proceeded to fire an ice augmented shot. The result was much as expected, the shot itself was unaffected in its travel time, but upon contact it released a small flash freeze. Just as there were certain mana types that mixed very poorly, with Radiance some were a perfect fit, both Magma and Holy were great choices as the Holy would purify anything in the small area of the shot, while the Magma had its slow travel time covered. The unruly kickback of the blaster also helped Ajax unlock the uncommon skill, focused aim, not only that, but he could actively feel his mana control improving as he started fine-tuning how powerful the augmentations on each blast are. He finally stopped when his mana dropped to one quarter, from there he had moved on to collecting the ingredients for his next, alchemy, session. While Ajax was slowly working his way through his ideal dungeon floor biome things on the outside of the dungeon weren't going quite as smoothly. A small wave of panic went through the guards waiting outside the arch when Lexi and Anna exited together with a tied-up Oliver. Thankfully for all of them the Empire guards were more than understand about political assassination attempts inside dungeons. This meant that while they offered them the courtesy of not interrogating Oliver they did scour through every single special item that exited the dungeon. There was one more with you when you went in, the guard finally said as he was handing everything back. Did he die? I thought it would be a good idea to make sure we had time to properly process everything by the book considering the situation, he is still alive inside so no monsters came out when we exited. Anna said diplomatically. He also mentioned something about hunting for crystals. Lexi jumped in with the cover story already established. Oliver simply remained silent throughout the entire process. It wasn't just the depression coming from the failed mission that was making him so obedient. Rather, it was his desire to not bring an international incident to his father's doorstep along with the failed mission. Having been cleared Lexi, Anna and Oliver were escorted by one guard through the city towards their courtyard while the other guard remained to wait for Ajax should he deem to exit the dungeon. Little did the poor guard know that they would be waiting a fair amount of time for this. You don't seem all that surprised by the assassination attempt. The emperor addressed Xavier as he had joined his father for lunch with the imperial family. We were warned ahead of time that something like it may happen during our trip and stay here. Xavier answered neutrality, inside however, he was cursing the emperor for using his high social skills against someone so young in order to get a better hold of the situation. That's good, one unexpected surprise is as much as any trip requires, the emperor sneered as he referred to Theron's lucky break. Multiple offers had been made by the empire to the beast kin in hopes to recover the worms. Unfortunately, for them all that did was lead to a few angry merchants as they were forced to treat the beast kin with respect while making their offers only to be rejected. Is there anything you would be willing to share about the tournament coming in a few years? This time the emperor addressed the crown prince, much to Xavier's relief. The elves are expected to win it, the crown prince offered. They are simply in too deep of a financial hole, following their most recent monarch. Seeing how their champion is yet to follow its king into retirement, their victory is all but assured. The only question remaining is how much we can get from them for it. None of this information was new to the imperial family their spies had kept them well in the loop concerning the big moves. What are you hoping to get from them? The Imperial Crown Prince asked. We are looking to see about obtaining delves into their dungeon as well, the Crown Prince answered. That's a lot of dungeons your nation will be visiting in the next few years, the Emperor chimed in. Our dungeon here, the elves, I've heard rumors about your father finally cashing in that dungeon delf favor from the Republic, and you will be coming back to mine after all that. With how fresh this piece is and the somewhat assured longevity of it based on their champion's good health now is the time to start preparing our next generation of champions and giving them a good start should help keep them motivated to push forward, the crown prince answered. 
Xavier felt a small pang of jealousy at that. He had mostly gotten over it after being repeatedly exposed to Ajax's talent and hard work. That didn't change the fact that there had already been a plan in the works to help strengthen the kingdom's next champion, with Ajax's appearance he had been moved down from the central position. Oddly enough Xavier knew that focusing on Ajax was the correct choice yet he still failed to smother every last ounce of jealousy. His earlier combat win did a lot to appease his own ego. That's great to hear, the emperor praised. I do wish all of your talented youths the best of luck. Despite the emperor's opinion on other races, he still knew very well that if even two or three were to ally together, they would be able to beat them due to sheer numbers. This meant that the stronger the human kingdom next to them was, the stronger their defense was since that was the only way to reach them. Just like that, three whole days had passed without Ajax showing any intention of exiting the dungeon. Suffice to say that the Imperials had started worrying about him trying to do something on the inside that they had missed in the inspection. After the fourth day ended with still no sign of Ajax the kingdom's people were starting to get worried as well and outright dread had started to set in by the fifth day. The entire breakfast table was eerily quiet as Xavier, Anna, Lexi, the crown prince and a few other nobles ate. Do you think something happened to him? Lexi asked anxiously. Something definitely happened, the crown prince answered. Most likely it was something good, and he is simply taking advantage of the opportunity, according to my brother, the risk of him actually dying is very low. What sort of opportunity takes so long? Lexi didn't give up. I remember a recent abandoned city floor theme where they managed to find an alchemist shop that had potions that increased skill growth for an hour when drunk. The crown prince offered. They sadly weren't able to get any clue as to what the recipe to make them was, but they took five days on that floor alone as they ran through the entire city supply of the potion and all of the team members broke through at least one skill bottleneck. During all this time Ajax could only guess at how much he worried people, but he had only just managed to finish killing every monster on this floor. Despite that he had gone through only half of the ingredients that could be found in the various greenhouses, and that was despite his extremely wasteful approach to experiments. Chapter 293 So stupid. Ajax mutters a little downcast as he rubs his left shoulder. It had been about ten days since he first entered the dungeon as part of the group of five and Ajax was planning to exit the dungeon today. Ideally, he would have liked to stay a lot longer on this floor theme, but he knew that even coming out like he planned he would just get the night to relax before the delve into the next dungeon began. As for why Ajax's shoulder hurt, he had nobody to blame but himself. After having activated the obelisk four days ago, he had spent ten hours killing everything that was left on the floor, before he started back up on his alchemy. Turns out one of the orc patrols was far enough away that they had gotten the drop on him when he was just setting up his equipment and nailed him with a well-placed arrow. Not only had Ajax not been running his, mana siphon, at the time, but his defense was much more focused on evading rather than blocking so the arrow reached deep. It wasn't enough to actually do more than inconvenience him when he was taking out the remaining patrol, but the poison on the arrow made it so he could still feel some discomfort, despite the healing potions and rest time he had. Before he steps out of the arch to exit the dungeon Ajax takes another look around to see the greenhouses he picked clean. Despite spending almost a week just practicing his alchemy in one of the most wasteful ways possible, he has still just barely managed to go through all of the ingredients. Before he stepped through the arch, he made sure to once again place his hand on it and try his best to memorize the mana he felt from it. When Ajax excited the place he had made sure to make it look like his alchemy set was totally unused, why his armor and pickaxe would be damaged and dirty. All this was done to better convince the Empire that he had stopped on the third floor out of greed. Ajax it took a moment for the one guard that was left to watch the dungeon to realize who he was looking at after most people on the expedition had already written Ajax off as dead due to not coming out in so long. What took you so long boy? Do you know how worried we were? The guard made to approach him, but was quickly intercepted. Stay back, not before we examine him. The dungeon guards quickly made sure nothing could be passed or hidden. Ajax knew to expect something like this. 
Even now, every last bit of space in his special ring was filled with the ore from the rainbow miniboss he killed on the third floor. Everybody expected that he either died or found something special, and they wanted to see what it was. The guard was shocked when he took the ring and looked inside it. Like most spatial items he got an instant knowledge of what was inside, and he felt a headache coming in from how full it was. Most shocking however was that most of it was taken up with jewels. Not or that may contain jewels, but the straight-up gems with a lot of them being on the very large side of the scale as far as gems went being bigger than his fist. That is quite the find you made there, I can see why you would stay inside so long for this, the inspector says, despite the gems only being from the third floor their quality is still something else to normal people. Not only that, but the amount he brought out is about equal to the amount that gets brought out of both dungeons in total in two months let alone the fact that it is made up from a large variety of gems. There is of course the tax the empire places on goods taken from the dungeon. The amount of gems brought out by one person would be enough to speed two or three jewelers and enchanters through some of their early level bottlenecks. The deal states that there is no tax to be placed on this delve. The goldmancer guard finally manages to approach as he also motions for the spatial ring to be returned to Ajax. You're going to have a lot of questions to answer, and not much time to do it when we get back, the guard whispers to Ajax, once they finally start moving away from the dungeon. Was it worth it? Yes. This is the only word Ajax actually spoke since he exited the dungeon, but the conviction he had when he said it along with the gems collected let him know the young man had made great strides. Ajax barely made it four steps into the compound the kingdom was using for their base of operations, before he was slammed into and hugged. What took you so long? Lexi, who had been slightly depressed from the floating rumor that Ajax had died, wasted no time before quickly letting him go, before it got awkward. Yes, I will have to insist that you answer Lady Manashaper's question. The crown prince, along with Xavier and Anna, stand not too far away, looking at him, with slight frowns, marred with a hint of relief. Though it might be best if we do it somewhere a bit more private. Once they made it to the private room the first thing the crown prince asked Ajax was for a confirmation of the story Anna and Lexi had presented him with, despite fully trusting their version of events he had a duty to verify everything. The dungeon guards really looked like they bought the cover story, Your Highness, the guard mentions once Ajax mentions how he stored most of the body of the mini-boss in his ring for the crystals. It helps that he all, but stumbled on a literal fortune. From there Ajax makes some slight mentions of the next two floors all but glossing over them and making sure not to mention the droid or blaster. The crown prince had high enough social skills to see that he was masking something, but not he simply decided to let it go as simply some word opportunity the dungeon presented him with. There was what? Everyone was left slack-jawed, however, once Ajax described the theme of the sixth floor. I couldn't just let the opportunity slip away, that was tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of gold worth of alchemy reagents. Ajax defended his actions. The alternative was to come back here and attend some noble parties. Ajax couldn't wipe the grin off his face as he thought about the progress he made in alchemy the experience he gained and especially the two rare skill, stabilize mixture, and, mass production. I won't argue you made the wrong decision, you clearly haven't, the crown prince says. But you do know you can't just keep avoiding social events, it isn't that big a deal doing it here in the empire, but once we get back you may have to attend a few more. Ajax knows the crown prince is right in his assessment, he even gets more than one or two commiseratory looks from Lexi and Xavier, both of whom have had to put up with social events they wanted no part in. With the interrogation over, Ajax quickly makes the rounds of the compound in order to find Theron. He is not surprised to find out that Theron had already made arrangements to have the worms looked after while he is in the dungeon. He could clearly see the anticipation in his retainer as he looked forward to delving the dungeon for extra stats after spending the better part of two weeks in the compound being haunted by merchants looking to buy his prize. Great to see that reports of your death were greatly exaggerated, my lord. Theron greeted Ajax with a voice that sounded extremely respectful despite the amusing memories the words brought Ajax from his previous life. 
everyone delving in the morning got to bed early, and Ajax all but collapsed onto the bed and was out like a light before his head even hit the pillow after so many days of extreme concentration. He was so tired that he ended up getting woken up by one of the servants, before quickly getting geared and heading out. You don't have to worry this delve will only take two, maybe three days. The Goldmancer booster guards grin as they take in his tired state. Ajax simply nods his thanks, but he knows that it's in this dungeon that the true challenge truly lies. The first day won't be anything special, they might get through two or three floors if they move quickly as the lower-leveled people get their stats. The second day however Ajax knows he will have to face a level 64 and if he gets a decent matchup on the next floor, maybe even a level 74. Chapter 294 The full 20 people entered the first floor of the dungeon, despite Oliver now being locked up and awaiting a trial once they returned to the kingdom it was clear that a substitute had been found to take his spot. Despite there being 20 people altogether only 5 of them could actually gain anything from the first floor with the monster's highest level being 34 Anna, Lexi, Xavier, Ajax, and Theron were the only ones who could gain the stat points for the floor. Unfortunately for Anna and Lexi, they would both have to step out with Xavier on the next floor, as while they might have been able to take out a level 40 they simply don't have enough mana to kill a level 44 even with a good matchup. The fights against the bosses on this floor ranged from hard-won battles for Xavier, Lexi and Anna, to a weak resistance the monsters managed against Theron who was 36 and Ajax, who all but one shot his own opponent without issue. Going from the first floor to the second still took them a couple of hours as they did have to search for five different mini-bosses, but it was a relatively short journey. Entering the second floor of the dungeon, the team was ready to grow smaller. Don't linger around this time as well, or I'll get the impression you just don't like us. Xavier joked with Ajax before he, Lexi, and Anna stepped out. The young prince had started making an effort to befriend Ajax ever since he came back from his perceived demise inside the dungeon. The second floor theme wasn't all that special, a rocky mountain range much like Ajax had encountered in the previous dungeon, this one however wasn't set in such a high altitude as to have snow and that cold of a weather. Much like in the previous floor Ajax had no trouble killing the level 44 mini-boss, the challenge would only start to ramp up from the next floor. Two more participants were only level 40 so this was the only floor they could gain stats from, but despite the four-level difference they had no problems killing a bear and an eagle respectively. The big challenge on this floor came down to Theron. As a full physical fighter fighting up eight levels was a lot tougher for him than it was for a mage like Lexi and Anna, or even a spellblade like Xavier. Not only that, but he simply didn't have a high enough proficiency with ranged weapons in order to use them in such high-level combat. It took the team almost three hours before they finally managed to find a mountain goat mini-boss scaling one of the cliffs. The reason for picking a mountain goat was simply that as was Theron's most favorable matchup in this environment. Despite the eagle being weaker and more fragile Theron had no way to deal with its flight and a bear was too offensively inclined to take on in melee combat. Throughout the entire battle, Theron showed off his great reflexes as he continuously dodged the goat's charge while also landing a blow as it zoomed past him. It only took six hits before he managed to cripple one of the legs and sent the goat face planting into the rocky floor. From there Theron kept the pressure up as it used the crippled leg as a way to keep his stance from the sharp horns. It took Theron ten minutes before he finally brought down the oversized mountain goat and he had an open gash on his left arm from where the goat managed to graze him with a horn on one of the charges. Not bad, you're only level 36 and you can handle something like this, some of the other nobles commented as they measured Theron's performance. Too bad you've already joined a house. Despite the words paying lip service to Ajax's presence, he was sure that once they exited the floor, Theron would be presented with at least one offer to join another house. Ajax wasn't worried about him taking the offer, so he didn't even mention it when he congratulated the bull beast kin on his fight. As they entered the third floor, the group lost another three of its members, of the remaining fourteen people eight of them were going to be leaving after they cleared this floor. This would just leave Ajax, the three guards, and one other person going on to push past the fourth floor. 
These people were all considered to be young having just barely passed 40 years of age and being already above level 50 they were the next generation of noble talents that every house was giving every opportunity they could to grow stronger in a time of peace. Without Ajax checking the arches they used to go up a floor in the dungeon a small issue cropped up when the third floor turned out to be one of the dreaded water-dominant biomes. If there was one silver lining it was that there were plenty of birds flying above the hundreds of small islands, and that with the increased aggressiveness it only took ten hours before everyone managed to get a solo kill on a mini-boss of their own. It was only once they entered the fifth floor and most of the party left that things turned serious between the remaining five people. You do understand your role in here Rex? One of the Goldmancer guards asked the last member of their team, he was the one to receive Oliver's spot in the dungeon. I do, after I get the upgrade for this floor, I'm to stick around for another twenty hours near the next floor's arch and only exit after that. Rex replied with a grin at his fortune to be selected for the newly opened spot. Ajax had spent most of the time on the second floor skinning the mini-bosses so that he would have something to show for himself as a reason to stick around inside the dungeon, after his previous stunt it was believable enough that he would just need someone else to cover as being the last person boosted. For the first time since entering the dungeon Ajax was finally also given the stronger gear that had been prepared for him ahead of time as the mini-bosses on this floor would be level 64. Ajax could feel the enchantments on the gear as the armor though much sturdier than his usual set felt even lighter, not only that but he had been given a metal mana attuned warhammer, this meant that he would be able to use a metal augmentation without feeding it through his gauntlet. The same applied to the wind-attuned sword, fire-attuned axe, and ice-attuned shield that had been loaned to him. Ajax was used to fighting level 64 monsters, but he had only done so as a part of a team in a group battle, while the guards would ensure that the battle remained a one versus one with the miniboss it should still prove a good warm-up unlike the rest of the floors. Funnily enough, the floor seemed to be of a similar biome to the first floor of the goldmine dungeon, back in Grinder. Despite the much larger floor size the forest surrounding a mountain with griffins flying up above was a very familiar sight for all of them. Ajax was slightly disappointed with encountering such a biome on this floor instead of the next, despite how deadly they are as a pack wolves are one of the best monsters to find on a floor for boosting as a lot of their power comes from their group tactics, while boosters can isolate the boss in a one versus one. It didn't take the group long before they ran into the first pack of deer on the floor, but Ajax was content to simply let Rex take this mini-boss as he simply watched. Rex more than lived up to his level 65 expectations. The man was a full-on rogue, with two daggers, that he used to slowly bleed out the stag while always keeping well away from the reinforced antlers. The fight lasted about 20 minutes, unlike Theron's, however, the Rex was the one on the offensive throughout the entire fight, simply content to keep prodding the stag until it got slower and slower due to blood loss before he slid its throat. We'll make camp here for now, the guard said after the battle. That should give you some time to rest, before you have to fight. Even with us being level 95s, we won't risk setting up a camp on the next floor. Despite higher level people being able to stay awake for a few days straight Ajax knew that it would still affect them so taking a break now seemed like a very good idea. Tomorrow, he would have a wolf to fight and hopefully a good biome for a level 74. Chapter 295 Ajax woke up refreshed the next morning. The booster had made sure that anything they needed to take care of was killed quietly without disturbing the two people they brought with them who would need their rest. Are you ready? The Goldmancer guard asked him. We have been tailing a small pack with a wolf miniboss. Ajax simply nodded as who stuffed a few rations into his mouth, before he quickly secured his loaned armor and followed after the booster. Now that he was quickly moving through the forest Ajax started to feel the difference between his loaned gear and his usual one. Despite the one he had on now being substantially better, it still felt odd to him as he didn't have a chance to break it in. That's what this fight is for. Ajax thought to himself as he called upon the wind, enhanced sword, and the fire axe. There was an argument to be made for the shield, but the hammer definitely wasn't the weapon to use against a speedy opponent like a wolf. There they are. The guard pointed out the pack of six wolves. The miniboss stood half a head taller than the rest and seemed to be scanning the surroundings. 
Despite having a common more strength-focused warrior build the booster had no problem attacking and wiping out the other five wolves, with a 30-level lead on them they proved easy pickings as Ajax tried to ambush the alpha. For the first time in a long time his opening shot from the bow was dodged, this was even more impressive considering that the wolf wasn't even focusing on him when he attacked, but on the booster who killed the other five. As soon as Ajax engaged, the booster backed off making sure to take none of the credit in the eyes of the system. With the high ambient mana on this floor Ajax had no issue keeping his, mana siphon, turned all the way up with only a small amount being provided from his own mana supplies, despite this he was barely landing small glancing blows against the wolf. It was easy to see that he had the wolf on the back foot, but this was slightly troubling, as this was merely the warm-up fight. The wolf was doing its best looking for any opening Ajax might present, but there was simply nothing. All it could do was try and get out of the way in time as the flaming axe and the wind blade were getting more and more hits in. A minute in, Ajax managed to land a more deep cut on the inside of the wolf's front leg, from there all it took was a well-timed application of his earth mana to get the wolf to slip placing even more pressure on the injured leg. Ajax was sure not to miss that opening as he lodged the axe straight into the wolf's skull. Not bad, the booster congratulated him. We might want to make sure the one on the next floor isn't so dexterity-focused. Ajax could only nod as they headed back to their makeshift camp before heading towards the next floor. How long am I to wait? Rex asked as he stood by the arch leading to the next floor. About ten hours should be enough one of the three boosters answered. He'll most likely be done in an hour or two, but if anything too dangerous comes for you here just leave. Ajax had gotten a chance to evaluate the arch with his, mana siphon, and found it eerily similar to the mana from this floor, there was something strange about it, however that he couldn't place his finger on. Entering the new floor Ajax, and the boosters found themselves in the oddest jungle Ajax had ever seen. They were surrounded by large green trees that seemed oddly thin for how wide they were. Damn it, the foliage is thick here, one of the guards cursed. I'll be here for about ten hours. Rex confirmed as he stood leaning against the arch, ready to jump through at any moment. The more they moved through the massive jungle, the more Ajax felt there was something odd about it, it seemed like he recognized his surroundings somewhat, but he didn't know why. That's why it all seemed so weird, we aren't in a jungle. Ajax exclaimed as they came upon the first monster on this floor. The monster in question was an oversized ant about the size of a dog. I hate the precised floor, one of the guards complained, clearly this wasn't the first time they had to fight on a floor where the dungeon increased the size of everything but the people entering. The others also seemed ready to complain, but Ajax felt his, danger sense, go off. Two of the boosters also seemed to have a similar reaction as while well Ajax quickly jumped aside from his current position both of them launched an attack in the direction the danger was coming from. The spider that tried to jump Ajax was quickly killed off, its landing had been slightly off as the prey he expected to land on had moved out of reach and two attacks met it instead. Great, they have ambush predators. Ajax silently cursed his luck. Let's find a mini-boss and get off this floor quickly. Ajax very much agreed with the guard's suggestion. It took no more than another fifteen minutes before they managed to find the first mini-boss on the floor. That one's no good. The booster shook his head as he looked towards the centipede. That one should work actually. Ajax surprised them. For most people a defensive-type monster with some form of magically increased defense, like they were sensing from the centipede would be a non-starter to push their limits against. For Ajax however, this was most likely his ideal matchup as with the massive amount of ambient mana he would spend next to nothing on, mana siphon, more than that he could actively use the same skill to also weaken the monster's defensive skill. Are you sure? The boosters double-checked with him. At Ajax's nod, they were quick to move and surround the centipede, they wanted to make sure nothing else would get the jump on Ajax during the fight. Much like with the wolf Ajax opening attack was fired from his bow, unlike the wolf, however the centipede didn't have the same awareness and took the opening arrow right through one of its eyes. 
Considering how little centipedes relied on eyesight this wouldn't do much to limit its senses, but it was the perfect weak point to ensure his lightning-infused arrow didn't just bounce off the armored exoskeleton. Much like he expected the centipede wasted no time using the two large antennas to sweep in his general direction, the jerky spasms and awkward movements showed that the lightning arrow had done its job in affecting its movement. What he didn't expect was the way mana radiated off the antennas as his, since mana, let him know exactly how the centipede was taking in its surroundings. Ajax tried firing a few more arrows as the centipede advanced on him, but now that it was paying attention to him he could do little more than bounce them off the durable exoskeleton. Much like the arrows Ajax knew that a wind-enhanced sword wasn't likely to do much better against that thick armor, the warhammer was the clear option the only question was would he use a shield or the axe with it. In the end Ajax went with the shield, with the mana potential of the monster, there was no reason to go all in on offense only to be blindsided by a spell. The fight played out in an odd mirror of the one he had earlier in the day against the wolf. Just like against the wolf Ajax was the faster of the two, where the fight differed was that Ajax was now the one who was spending most of his time dodging attacks while looking for an opening to land a few strikes. Every time his hammer managed to connect Ajax made sure to augment the strike with a solid bit of metal mana. The attacks were effective as they were slowly but surely cracking through the tough shell that protected the head of the centipede. The only issue was that Ajax couldn't maintain his offense without the centipede trading a few blows back. Each of the blows Ajax took he made sure to try and redirect. Despite that even the glancing blows he was taking caused the defensive enchantments on his shield and gear to activate. Ajax could actively feel himself bruising despite the extra protection and he knew that had he still been using his own gear he wouldn't be able to outlast the centipede. Five minutes into the fight and Ajax's started heaving his breaths, he had gone through half of his entire mana pool and a third of his stamina. His health was doing much better, still sitting high above 80%. The centipede on the other hand looked like a vase that was glued back together, the exoskeleton on its head was now a large series of cracks. This would be so much simpler with Void Ajax silently complained to himself, but that was one secret he wasn't ready to let slip just yet. Despite all this Ajax was still grinning, he knew that the fight was going his way, all he had to do was continue like this, and it wouldn't be long until the centipede died. The centipede was obviously of the same opinion as it started fighting more and more recklessly. Ajax could feel each blow he knocked aside with his shield reverberate through his bones, each attack was now more telegraphed, but at the same time carried more of the centipede's body weight. Thick blue blood started pouring out through the cracks in the exoskeleton as Ajax had focused most of his strikes there. A surge of mana was quickly released, it was a trick Ajax recognized as usually he was the one messing with the ground beneath his opponent's feet, unfortunately even with, mana siphon, and his own casting he wasn't able to overpower the centipede's manipulation entirely. For the first time during the fight Ajax was now in range of the centipede's fangs, he pushed a solid 200 ice mana through his shield, letting it withstand one side of the bite while his chest piece dented and his ribs broke on the other side. Sadly for the centipede that simply wasn't enough, despite the pain Ajax endured and now had an open shot and buried his warhammer straight through the broken exoskeleton and crushed the head of the centipede. Easy there kid. The boosters were quick to come after he tanked that last attack. You killed it. Good job, because if you hadn't we would have after you took that hit. Ajax said nothing but simply focused on his light magic as he left his safety in the hands of the boosters as he focused on patching up his broken ribs. Chapter 296 Ajax was focusing on his healing and holy magic as the guards surrounded him looking ready to move on. I don't know which part is more unbelievable, that you are 17 and you brought down a level 74 or that you are only level 36 and did the same thing. One of the guards said as he looked over the dead miniboss. Ajax was surprised to see a flashing system icon in the bottom right of his vision. While keeping up his healing spell, to mend his ribs from where the centipede crushed him Ajax opened it up. Achievement, pick on someone your own size. Solo kill a dungeon mini-boss that is more than twice your level without using the environment or a temporary boosting consumable, at least a 30-level difference. 
requires no discoveries. Pick a skill to gain, aura immunity, enigma, inspector's eye, pain immunity, truth sense. Cost, for the next 20 levels, reaching level 56, combat with enemies 20 levels above you or less grants vastly reduced experience. Ajax was shocked reading what the rewards for his achievement was, it was clear all those skills were legendary ones, and the cost that came with getting them wasn't all that high for him, the only question was which one should he get. Let's get moving. The three boosters started hurting Ajax, towards the arch, the centipede, was protecting. Ajax hesitated for a moment, before he decided to make his decision. While all of the skills seemed very good there was one that would always be useful to him and he had little hope of unlocking on his own. Before he went through the arch to the sixth floor Ajax made sure to change back into his regular gear and give the borrowed one back to the boosters. With nothing else to do on the floor, they all passed through the arch. Once on the sixth floor Ajax wasted no time dismissing the plus one to all stats notification before heading back straight back through the arch and out of the dungeon. Unlike last time since Ajax came out of the dungeon on schedule he found quite a few kingdom personnel waiting for him, not only that, but he didn't even blink when the Empire demanded to check his spatial ring he had something much more important to check. Name, Ajax. Level, 35. Traits, Divine Witness, Baron. His status had made great strides since the last time he checked it. His level had been barely a couple thousand experience points into level 35 and after only two delves, he was almost level 36. His resources showed just how difficult the fight against the centipede had been but his stats showed the biggest change and the prize he had come here for. After two delves all of his stats grew by nine points just from the floor clearance bonus. The battle with Centipede could be seen in the increase to his physical combat skills, while his research into different applications of mana could be seen in the leap all of his mana skills made. The biggest winner by far had to be, Alchemy, and the related skills. The week-long extended trip was clearly showing its worth as the skills progressed by leaps and bounds. When he was given back the ring Ajax noticed that the skin from the monster he killed on the second floor was missing. Ajax didn't know how they knew which one belonged to the monster he killed, but he knew they would be analyzing it to try to find out more about it, but decided not to make a fuss about it here. Once he got back to their compound Ajax found himself taken straight to the crown prince, not only that, but this time nobody else was taken along with him. Yes, your highness? Ajax asked once he was brought in. The crown prince waited until they were left alone in the room, before he took out an amulet to create a privacy screen around them. What were the rewards like, his voice giddy, with anticipation. I'm sorry? Ajax sounded confused. We know that killing a dungeon boss that is twice your level on your own grants you your pick from a selection or rare skills. Doing so without making use of a boosting potion or the environment grants you an epic skill. The cost of taking that skill however is too high as most are unable to keep on leveling at a steady pace unless they are crafters. Does doing so without either grant you a legendary skill? Ajax was shocked to have that question, brought straight up. Eh. It. So it does. The prince exclaimed. Not only that, but if a social skill is part of the selection, you clearly didn't take it. Yes, it does grant that offer. Ajax admitted once he saw the crown prince already put it together. That is all I wanted to know. The royal cut him off, before Ajax could tell him any more. My father may ask you more about the options you were given, but not even my privacy screen is secure enough that I would go into detail about what you may have selected while inside the Empire capital. I will say congratulations. Thank you, your majesty. Ajax nodded. I would like to mention that the Empire did take the skin from the monster I killed on the second floor after I came out of the dungeon. That is quite unfortunate, the prince frowned at that new, his excitement gone replaced by a calculating look like flipping a switch. Ideally, you wouldn't have brought that particular skin out with you even if it would have looked suspicious. Never mind, what's done is done. The frown only showed on his face for an instant before it was replaced with a smirk. That little overextension actually gives us the perfect excuse to have you miss tonight's party on account of you being tired. 
Ajax was over the moon at the news that he wouldn't have to attend another party with the Empire's nobility. I really am tired. Ajax dropped any pretense of hiding his exhaustion after the fight and even played it up with his few social skills. You better get a good night's rest since we are leaving tomorrow at noon, the crown prince said before he dismissed Ajax. Chapter 297 the trip back was very much like the trip to the Empire, yet for Ajax, they might as well have been completely different. The only part that hadn't changed for him was the noble parties that he dreaded to attend. Are you sure that's what you want to focus on now? The Goldmancer guard that had joined them in the carriage asked. If I wait any longer than this coming summer break, I know I'll lose out on a floor worth of rewards. Ajax was adamant. You do know those dungeons have an insane floor leap, there is a reason why no villages have survived anywhere near them, the guard asked again. I know. Ajax confirmed. Ajax had spent a good portion of the trip trying to plan his progression into the two remaining dungeons that the kingdom had. Both dungeons started higher than the regular 30 to 35 with them being 31 to 36 and 32 to 37 for their first floors, but their real challenge came from the 15 and 20 respective level leap between floors. This made progressing from one floor to the next an impossibility for any delver. It was also the reason why the dungeon arches were always surrounded by the monsters left by the last group of people to go and gain their extra stat points. Ajax was hoping to be able to gain a 3-floor bonus from the 20-level leap dungeon and 4-floor bonuses from the 15-level leap dungeon. This however would mean that he would need to be able to defeat a level 81-level monster by summertime. The 7-level leap might not seem all that insurmountable in half a year, but Ajax couldn't surpass level 38 if he wanted the reward from the first floor. As long as you can afford it I'm sure House Goldmancer will let you hire their booster but don't expect me to come do it, the guard shrugged with helplessness. Even now Ajax could see that the boosters had a much tougher challenge than expected, sure they were all level 95 but the three of them had managed to clean an entire level 79 to 84 floor in less than 24 hours which was truly impressive. Dad will probably get you a really good deal. Anna joined the conversation. Will he though? I all but promised him I would take care of anything that would happen to you inside the dungeon. Ajax replied, but his tone made it clear it was a joke, his confidence actually stemming from the fact that he had done House Goldmancer another big favor. Saving me was part of the deal, but you also managed to get him a gift-wrapped prisoner to interrogate about who was involved, that's worth a bonus at the very least. Anna decided to go along with his joke. My lord do I really have to hold them? Theron complained again. Since the second trip of their return journey, the worms had hit their first growth spurt. This wouldn't have usually been a problem, however, along with that growth spurt came a large release of slime as they constantly outgrew the soft exoskeletons for the next two months. Already, they had grown to be almost as thick as Theron's legs and had his height in length. Yes, Theron. Ajax sighed, having had this discussion before. It's only one more day before we get home, and you're already slimed, he only whispered the second part as he really did feel a little guilty for what Theron had to put up, he'd make sure both July and his grandfather would learn of his plight and have them reward him for bringing back the worms. Emperor POV as Ajax was departing. Well? What did we manage to find out about the boy? I asked my advisors. There is definitely something special, my spymaster said. Despite their best efforts to hide what he can do we are confident he can fight as well as a level 50. An almost 15-level jump in power from a 17-year-old, that certainly is something. I comment. Are we any closer to figuring out how he did it? Yes, sire, my head advisor chimes in. We've uncovered that he somehow managed to hold back on assigning any points in his stats until he almost turned 15. That can't be everything. I say. It actually fits pretty well. I am surprised to see the general answer. Go on. I urged him. Most nobles only manage to gain an extra 20 stats, through sheer effort, between the ages of 10 and 15. The general says. Commoners manage 25 to 30. 
If he found a way to hold on to those points it means that not only his challenge in gaining extra points didn't spike like most people does when they reach 10 but as a spellblade fighter he would have been pushing all of his stats daily. The argument certainly got more traction when you looked at it like that. How much would it be worth, an extra 20 points in every stat maybe? Add on stats from potions and dungeons, as long as he is a talented combatant it makes sense that he would be able to hit 15 levels above even at his age. Find out the method he used, if it is easy to replicate we need to start teaching it. I order. And what about the boy, the spymaster asks. Leak the information about his performance. I decided after a moment to think about it. Mention nothing of his technique, but let the pointy ears and the animals know what he can do. If we're lucky they might just make a move and push him straight to us with a more understanding outlook on our views. Sylvanthal, as Ajax was arriving in Grinder's capital. So the Empire is hoping we will bite, the elven king asked his old friend and champion. It certainly seems that way, the champion responded. The boy will be a problem. The king sighed. He will be outmatched by more than 15 levels in the tournament, some of our people will be above 80 by that time, the champion sounded shocked. Maybe he will not play a big part in this contest, the king admitted. But he is young, give him another two decades, and Grinder will have him win everything under fifty years of age. Are you suggesting we kill the boy? The champion frowned at the idea. No, disgusted as I am to say it, we might just use the boy to make sure we extend this forcefully peaceful, the king laments. We just need to make a good impression on him. The proud rock as Ajax was arriving back in Grinder's capital. We have news on the boy, my king, the rat beast kin said as he bowed to the lion and tiger beast kin. That's great to hear. The king said with a roar. The imperials managed to confirm that he is able to fight fifteen levels above himself, the spymaster squeaked out. And where did you get this information? the duke asked, his mind already running through different scenarios. It was actually surprisingly easy to gather, it came from at least ten sources the rat beast kin revealed. You think it isn't accurate? the king asked, his enthusiasm dampened. No, it's accurate, the duke responded quietly as he began to pace as his tail flicked. It might be a lowball actually, but the empire is leaking the information. Why would they? the king asked. They want us to make an attempt on his life, the duke answered. We either kill him for them or push him more towards their views where they might recruit him. So you're saying we should leave him alone? The spymaster asked surprised, knowing the duke's usual tactics. Unfortunately, yes, the duke let out a remorseful sigh. It was a good plan by the imperials, under normal circumstances I would still recommend that we eliminate him early due to his potential, but doing so would tip our hand too early, maybe we will get lucky and one of the other kingdoms will take him out for us.